welcome back to Mackenzie's Animation Corner. Today I am watching another episode of The Dragon Prince. Today's episode is episode 5 and it's called An Empty Throne. So I am really starting to like this series. Uh, it took me a little while to catch on, but I think I'm really getting into it now. And I'm excited to see where it's going to go from here. And yeah, let's just jump right in. I am ready to see some more of Zadia about that. And I want to see some dragons. I like dragons. Why does he look so creepy? A volunteer. How eager. <sighs> Is he doing his skincare routine? I'm going to find some food. Wait, we got food? We grabbed a sack of bread at the Panther Lodge. But I thought this was a sack bread? of clubs. Thought I might run into you here. We need to talk. Mm, beef. <laughs> Ugh, what is this thing made of? Magic. What is it? What happened? Oh, no. He tried to copy Claudia's lightning spells, but he doesn't know how to finish it. Know what? I'm just gonna throw it. What? No! Yeah, I'm gonna throw you the primal stone. That's a good plan. <laughs> no, that's not a good plan. I don't think it's a good plan either. I won't throw it. I'll just gently toss it. No, no, no. No throwing, no tossing. Tossing it. It worked. I'm okay. <laughs> oh goodness. We're walking. That's final. Why does she not want to go by boat? Is there maybe another reason you don't want to take the boat? Something you're not telling us? No, there's no secret reason. She can't swim. So wait. That's my guess. <laughs> Are you like this back flipping, tree climbing, sword stabbing, elven warrior? Scared of a little splish splashing? Oh, that's cute. You wanted this outcome. How dare you suggest his death creates opportunity for you? His death breaks my heart. Then yeah. honor him. Find his children. They're gone, Amaya. An empty throne is a beacon of weakness, an invitation to destroy us. We must defend Catullus. You think I am being an opportunist, but I couldn't be more selfless in my motivation. I am a servant of Catullus. I am a servant. It's hard because they're both right. Like, they do need somebody to be on the throne, but I don't feel like it should be Viren because I think he has ulterior motives. Because even if they find Ezra and Callum, neither of them are old enough to rule a kingdom. So, somebody needs to do it in their place for a little while. Bait loves the water, but he should be afraid of it. You want to know why he's named Bait? Mm -hmm. Not really. Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. It's kind of a sick <laughs> joke, I guess. Glow toads, they're apparently delicious. Tell you what, I'm gonna ask you five questions. Please don't. Come on, it'll be a fun distraction. Help take your mind off things. <sighs> five questions. That's all you get. We always heard all these crazy things about Zadia, like it, it was this place with just magic everywhere. Is that really what it's like? Yes. In Zadia, magic is pretty much in everything. It's no different from saying everywhere you look, there's nature. It's just Part of the vibrance or spirit of things, you know? I can't wait to see that. Sounds Me incredible. too! <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Question two. What are your parents like? They're dead. Oh. Rayla, I didn't mean to. Go to the dog Way to kill the it's vibe. Fine. <laughs> uh, there's a waterfall. The water's about to look! Rapids? No, waterfall. Rapids. Oh no, waterfall. I don't know why that was so unclear to me. having a grand old time your sister made him better okay so that's Harold told me he was never as strong or brave as Queen Sarai believed him to be a sweet tooth and an iron fist General Amaya I am sorry I was assuming that they had different moms but now I'm thinking actually is Ezrin Callum's half-brother not his stepbrother of course but allow me to ask, what happens to the breach? You said yourself how precarious the situation is. Without you there commanding the fortress, do you believe in your I like heart that he signs that will for her when her back is turned Make your point. And in case you still doubt my intentions, I will task my own children, Soren and Claudia, with leading the rescue expedition. I do doubt your intentions. I will return to the breach, but your children won't lead the rescue. The mission will be assigned to Commander Gren. That's that's me. I, I am Commander Gren. You faced your fear. Do you feel better about water now? No, I have never felt worse about water. Hmm. Well, anyway, we're making great time. Hey guys. It's weird that when her hair Does is wet, it's like a gray color. Oh no! Bait! Come back here! Do your froggy paddle! <laughs> oh god. Wait, why would the ocean rune be? Oh no! Good for her. She landed on the land. A sweet, solid land. We meet again. Ah! It's down to me, isn't it? Of course it is. Goodbye, sweet, solid land. I barely knew you. <laughs> I have an idea. Rayla, jump! But you don't know how to just jump! Ah! <laughs> you want to talk about cuted all the fish in the sea? Trust Viren. It may be a month from now. It may be a year. But he will stab you in the back. Yeah, I believe that. Oh, Gren? Bad news. There's been a change of plans. What are you talking about? What is he talking about? Oh, I've decided you're off the mission. Soren will lead the rescue expedition. What? General Amaya was very specific that I was to lead <laughs> Literally this. Literally took him like five seconds to betray him. I guess I was afraid of being afraid. Ooh, that's a really pretty that's shot. That's kind of circular. My parents aren't really dead. But I wish they were. They're cowards. What, what do you mean? My parents were part of an elite force. The Dragon Guard. Eight elven warriors chosen to protect the egg of the Dragon Prince. But when the humans came and killed the Dragon King, the Dragon Guard, my parents, failed in their duty. They ran away. I'm so ashamed. Rayla, I'm, I'm so sorry for what humans did. So you see, that's why I have to make things right. When I first came here, I was on a quest for revenge. But the moment I saw that egg, everything changed. Now, this is a journey of redemption. 
we're in this together. Our boat seems to be drifting away. It slipped just out my reach. What will we do now? <sighs> Goodbye, boat. So what's the deal with your wrist ribbon thing? Does it mean something? Oh, um, nah. It's just decorative. Decorative? I thought she could tell them. I mean, they knew that she came there to kill them. I guess maybe then they would start asking questions about, well, you had another ribbon and that one fell off. What did that one mean? What are your concerns? Well, <clears throat> you took me off the mission. Hmm, noted. Go on. And you threw me in this dungeon. Ah, I see. Anything else? Uh, no. But no. I guess those are the main two. Thank you. Your feedback is a gift. <laughs> That's why he's in his customer service voice. He's still refusing to eat. Oh, the elf. I was like, who? Then let him be hungry. I really liked this episode. I liked that we were getting some more characterization for Rayla and some of her backstory. Um, it was interesting to get to hear about her parents and her having to face her fear of water, things like that. It was nice that we got a little bit of an insight into who Callum and possibly Ezrin's mom is. I'm so confused about their family status for some reason. So if anybody wants to explain that to me, like without any spoilers, because they might have already mentioned it and I just got confused. I'm starting to think that they're like step, they're not like full stepbrothers, but they're like half brothers. Like they have the same mom, different dads. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but I'm not super clear on that. I like getting to see more of their aunt, and I'm really not minding as much as I thought I would the whole storyline with Viren and everything. I thought that was really going to bug me, but it's fine. And I really like, somebody commented a couple weeks ago that one of the interesting things about this show is nobody's truly good or truly evil, really. And that's so true for Viren. I feel like Viren does a lot of things where he has the kingdom's best interests at heart, but he also does a lot of things like locking away the sky and things like that um, that are very questionable. Uh, so, like in this episode, I feel like he made a lot of good points about how somebody needs to be on the throne because right now they're vulnerable and they can't just wait until the uh, children are found and even his points about her needing to go to the breach and that's the best place for her to be right now uh, were pretty good points. Obviously he had an ulterior motive with that that he wanted to get rid of her so that he can rule the kingdom but he wasn't wrong necessarily in what he was saying so it's just very interesting. He's an interesting character. And more so than I thought he was going to be at the beginning. At the beginning I was like, oh, well this man is clearly coded to be the bad guy, so he's the villain. But like, he's kind of an interesting villain. I liked that we got a little bit more of Callum learning how to use magic. Obviously he needs some help with that. Oh, I was also going to say about the sign language. I really like that there's a lot of sign language that they're putting in there. They're not having the interpreter say what she's saying. Uh, there was a lot of moments there where it was just like her signing and no subtitles or anything explaining what she was saying. I find that really interesting because I feel like in a lot of fantasy shows or movies or things like that, uh, they come up with like a a fake language and this one has that with Dr Draconis or whatever they keep saying it's called so that it has a fake language but it's also really interesting that they put in like a real language that a lot of people aren't familiar with because I feel like a lot of the time in fantasy literature um, big fans like to learn that language and it's kind of you know it's a fun thing like in Lord of the Rings you know people were in Elvish and that kind of thing um, and so that's something fun that they can do. And so I feel like for this show, fans might try to learn sign language, which is really cool because that's a language that there's a lot of people in life that actually speak that language. 
So it's an actual useful skill if you're teaching yourself this so that you can watch a TV show, um, but you can also apply it to real life. I just think that's really neat that they did it that way. And it's one of the reasons why I feel like representation matters. But yeah, I think that's about it that I had to say about this episode, and I really enjoyed it. If you liked my reaction to this episode of The Dragon Prince, please like the video and then comment down below um, things that I missed. Uh, maybe an explanation would be nice about uh, Caleb and Ezrin's parentage, because I am confused about that. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. I post Dragon Prince videos on Fridays, and then I post Harley Quinn videos on Tuesdays. Thank you guys for watching. Netflix is telling me to watch She-Ra again. I watch She-Ra every, like, couple weeks. So why are you telling me to watch it again? I promise I would.